Okay, so I'd like to go ahead and try um, this one here. Um, I've got um, some press, pressure variations in an air column. All right, that's going to be my um, main idea here. Uh, that column is actually going to be a tube with a speaker on one side, and that's going to cause these pressure variations because it's a sound wave. Um, and these are given by this equation here, long boring equation. We're just going to analyze it and figure out what the amplitude is of this sound wave, what the frequency is, what the wavelength is, and what the speed of sound is uh, for this sound wave. Um, we should already know what that is. I said it's an air column, so it should end up being somewhere around 343 uh, meters per second is what we have in the book, I believe. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and draw that out. The first thing we should usually do is draw it out. Sometimes we, we're not completely sure how to draw it, in which case we can, you know, start just writing things down and try to figure things out. But usually drawing everything out gives a really good idea about what you're doing, right? So if I've got an air column, it's got a wall on this side, and, uh, you know, it's in this tube, I said, so the tube it comes around like that, and I'm going to ignore that um, part. It's just a cross section I'm looking at. Like this. Um, so these are the walls of the tube and they have nothing to do with the problem. Uh, the only reason why they're in a problem like this is to keep the sound columnated, right? And they're in their column, it's columnated. Um, and being columnated, it all goes in the same, same direction and we can treat it as a one-dimensional problem rather than a two or three-dimensional problem um, with sound usually a three dimensional problem, but we'll see a lot of two-dimensional reasoning next time when we talk about um, Doppler stuff. All right. Although Doppler stuff is in three dimensions, it's uh, it's only kind of, you know, you can look at it and you only have two important directions, basically. So we'll look at that in two dimensions. Um, so here I've got my um, speaker, and what I'll do is I'll just draw out some wave fronts here. And let's see, there's another wave front there and another wave front there. Those are about equal. They should be perpendicular to this thing. Um, they're propagating in this direction. That would be K. Um, that propagation constant. And I'll also draw out, in this case, a um, plot. Plots are a good representation, especially for a um, for a diagram. If you don't know any other diagram, but you can figure out a plot to plot of the uh, original data um, in a problem, say in your um, homework, for example, uh, it's usually a good idea to plot it out. So we've got P, and we're having temperature variations around some average. If this is air, that average is atmospheric pressure, right there. And um, then, according to what we like to think about, these should be peaks, right? These wave fronts should be associated with peaks. Halfway between each one of those should be a trough. And halfway between each one of those should be, you know, this thing going through the equilibrium. Um, and then we can just draw this out, looks sort of like that, 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 uh, missed just a little bit, but that's okay. Um, uh, and you don't have to draw, that, draw out the K, but it doesn't hurt. Um, so I'm doing this at whatever time T I drew this wavefront at, but you can always plot against x minus vt. Uh, that's actually a sort of better way to do it. So that's our, um, that's our wave there. And then we want to go ahead and identify the things we're going to work with with this wave, right? Um, obviously, I said I want to look at the wavelength lambda here, for example, and I want to figure out what uh, the um, amplitude here, delta p naught, is. Um, 
uh, I can't sort of draw out the frequency or the wave speed. The velocity is going in this direction. The same, it's propagating in the same direction as k. Um, we talked a bit, bit about that before, how k is related to the moment, momentum. Um, so we've got all this stuff working out here. Now we want to sort of categorize it uh, and then, and then um, figure out stuff. So first thing we have to do is we have to write our givens. And I know that I've written this out here, but um, you know I'm writing this out the way you should write it out on your um, homework problem, which means you don't write this part out. This is where you start giving me your homework, right? This this is from the book or from the um, sheet I give you, uh, depending on what sort of problem it is, and. Um, and this is what I want to actually see. This is this is what I want to see. I want to see how you um, categorize and um, think about the problem. I don't really care that you can write word for word what was written in the book. If it helps you write word for word what was in the book. Write it on the uh, write it in the um, spiral notebook or whatever that you do your homework in first before you write it out like this, which is what you should probably be doing, right? I've said that a few times in class, and I know that there are a few people who um, don't really follow that that direction uh, and just try to do everything on the um, same sheet of paper that they're going to turn in, and you know it shows both on the paper and on the reasoning. Um, so, anyways, I just want to um, rewrite this down here because that's what I want you to do on your. Um, on your homework, this is what you are given, um, and this is what you're going to have to work with. Now, I do want you to still tell me what things are. Now, you can't tell me what all this stuff is, but you can tell me that delta P is um, the pressure wave. X is position. You can tell me that T is time. I do want you to define your variables. I mean, you know, here in physics too, you, you know, all of these variables and things, you know, they're pretty standard. But in the real world, you can choose whatever you want at any given time and use it just because you haven't used it somewhere else in this long, complicated problem. Um, but when you report it, you have to make sure that whoever is reading it knows what these variables are. In fact, I was talking to my wife about that this um, weekend. As, she, you know, as you know, she works um, as an engineer. And you know, apparently, there's been at least one person in her company that really gets everyone else irate um, because he likes, in his reports, to include a lot of equations and not include what exactly all of those symbols are in the the equation in the equations elsewhere, um, you know, standard engineering practice would probably be to have a um, list of equations, you know, in such a, in such a report. So you have an appendix or symbols, have an appendix and just list what um, what the uh, Symbols mean at the beginning or at the end of the uh, at the end of the um, report. Um, standard standard scientific practice when you're writing a writing something is to you know write out what those symbols are in the um, in the actual uh, in the actual text when you actually have you know you have a big block of text. Most reports are written in English, um, so you know you write out those symbols in the text. Uh, but you know, in um, in your homework, you can just do this right there at the top. You're telling me everything you want, you, you know, right? It's this thing. You, you don't know what these things are yet. You well, you do, right? Because you've read the book, you've listened to lectures. You're watching this thing. You, you know what these are going to be, um, how they're related to these symbols here. But you want somebody who's looking at what you're doing, in this case me, to um, be able to follow what you're doing. Because 
Um, well, one thing, you've done all this work to make it, and you, you want people to actually understand it. And for another thing is if you did make a mistake on your homework and everything's really clear, it's going to be harder for me to find because I'm just looking at the um, check marks. Um, and it says, oh yeah, that looks right, that looks right, that looks right. Um, but if you make it hard for me to figure out if it, if it looks right, then I think, oh, well, there's something wrong here, right? So, I mean, it's also good if you want to hide something to make it very, very clear. I, I know that sound sounds odd, but... Um, the only time that that wouldn't happen is when, uh, when you know, somebody is really, really, really um, out of time. Anyways, how are we going to solve this? How are we going to find all of these things, the amplitude, the frequency, the wavelength, and the, and the wave speed? Well, with our concept of a sound wave, um, that goes with the equation delta P X T, oh, isn't that nice, is equal to delta P naught um, sine kx minus omega t. With that, um, we can just do a lot of comparison. We can figure out what um, delta p naught is, in fact, immediately. So I'm going to move this up so we can do that and find the answer. All right. So, for example, the amplitude is by inspection delta p naught is equal to 1.25 uh, pascals. Reasonable. Uh, why is that reasonable? I'll tell you in a minute. Um, the frequency. You know, the frequency we want actually is f. I keep doing that. Uh, f is equal to omega over 2 pi. Right, omega is this thing, right? So that's 34 pi uh, seconds to the minus one or hertz over two pi, which is 17 um, hertz or inverse seconds. Okay, we got that, we got that, that's good. Um, uh, then we want the wavelength. Now, the wavelength is a little bit different. It's lambda is 2 pi over the wave number. And so we have 2 pi over, um, what did I say, pi over 10 meters. Okay, so the pi's cancel, 1 tenth is, 1 tenth is, 1 over 1 tenth is 10. So we have 10 times 2 times meters, which is 20 meters. And then we've got various options for the speed of the wave. Um, I think at this point, since we just found lambda and we just found f, and if you multiply those together, you get the speed, we'll just do that. So we have 17 inverse seconds, 20 meters, equals 340 um, meters per second. Looking good? Looking great. You're loving this. I know you're loving this. Um, so then we want to check stuff. Well, let's see. What, what can we check? Um, well, I already said that the velocity uh, so the wave speed so this so the speed of sound call that Uh, is a, should be around 343 meters per second. That's actually the high range. So in the book they have um, 331 meters per second as one limit. 343 meters per second isn't really a limit. It's another one that they give it, give you. But these are the ranges from like zero degrees to I forget what that is. 25 degrees centigrade. Um, so this is a reasonable speed. Lies within that. See all that reasoning? That's all you need for that kind of reasoning. Another check here might be... Um, 
So the pressure variations are small. And what do I mean by small, right? Small is a um, relative term. You may have heard that before. You know, I am small compared to um, the rock, right? Uh, you are probably small compared to me for most of you and definitely if we take the masses. Um, so that means that, you, you, you know, what, what does, you know, we have to figure out what this small means. Well, in this case, what I mean is the change in the, um, the change in the pressure from atmospheric pressure is small, right? And delta P naught is 1.25 pascals, right? Atmospheric pressure is 101 ki kilopascals, kilopascals. So that's about, um, I don't know, 10 to the minus 5, which is pretty small. That's, um, let's see, 10 to the minus 2, that's 1 1,000th one of 1%, right? 0.001%. You know, it's they're really small. That's what really sound waves are. They're small oscillations and things like that. So I think that's pretty reasonable. I um, hope that's something that you um, can do. Uh, you have to be able to do it. That's This is a basic skill. This isn't something that really shows up on your um, on your test directly. It shows up on your test because if you can't do this, you can't do the other problems. Um, so uh, I hope all this makes sense to you. I hope, I hope this helps you with um, your homework, and I uh, will see you in class.